we begin this Sunday morning with an eye on the Senate amidst outrage this weekend from many Republicans after Democrat Senator Chuck Schumer denounced Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, calling for an open election in Israel, saying on the Senate floor this week Netanyahu had, quote, lost his way and was an obstacle to peace and no longer served the needs of Israel. This coming literally in the middle of the country's fight for its survival. Adding to the divisions Joe Biden has already created with his public calls for a ceasefire as Israel retaliates against Hamas terrorists who have yet to agree to hostage releases, including five Americans being held. This as President Trump wades into the Senate leadership race this week, endorsing John Barrasso for Senate Republican whip, the conference's number two position, writing on Truth Social in part, quote, I know John very well. He will never let you down as Texas Senator John Cornyn and South Dakota Senator John Thune both announced their bid for the top job. One big test, will either of them work well with President Trump? As South Carolina Senator Tim Scott explained right here last weekend. i like to see someone leading the Senate who is willing and able to work hand in glove with President Trump. We need a majority in the Senate that understands putting America first is working with President Trump. Meanwhile, Joe Biden gave us a glimpse into what a potential additional four years led by Democrats would look like this week with Biden's 2025 budget proposal. It included at least five and a half trillion dollars of new and higher taxes, a cut in defense spending after inflation and no efforts to secure the southern border. Joining me right now with more on the future of the Senate and the Republican agenda is the man himself, Wyoming Senator John Barrasso. Senator, thanks very much for being here. Great to be with you, Maria. Thank you. So, so much to discuss with you. You gave a speech on the floor right after Chuck Schumer when Schumer denounced Netanyahu. Is that right? Um, that's right. Look, Israel is a democracy. And we do not need Chuck Schumer or Joe Biden telling the people of Israel who they get to vote for or decide to vote for to be their leaders. Don't need that at all. Schumer called Netanyahu, an obstacle to peace. The obstacle to peace is Hamas, the Hamas terrorists, the Hamas murderers, the Hamas rapists. Israel and the United States have been closest of allies for decades. Israel has every right to defend itself, and Republicans and, and Democrats alike have been saying that in the Senate. But right now, it looks like Joe Biden, Chuck Schumer have changed their mind about things. And I'll tell you why I believe it is. It's because the radicals in their party are not agreeing with Israel. They're siding with Hamas. And both Biden and Schumer are worried about them in their efforts to stay in the White House. We need to elect Donald Trump to be president. Well, congratulations to you on Donald Trump's endorsement for your number two role in the Senate. What can you all do to finally secure the border? Well, number one, I'm so grateful for President Trump's support, and I'm going to do everything I can do to make sure that he gets elected and that we get a Republican majority in the Senate and in the House, because the Democrats are a party of an open border and high prices. We need a better border president. We don't have that now. We have a president that allowed 9 million illegal immigrants into the country. He said he needs more laws. He doesn't need more laws. He needs to stop abusing the laws. President Trump and Republicans understand that. I mean, Joe Biden apologized for the murderer of Lincoln, of, 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 sorry, of Lake and Riley, for calling him an illegal. That's what he was. He's here under Biden's policies. It's not new laws that we need. You put the Republicans in charge, and what we're going to get is we're going to be able to defund the things that the Democrats have been doing the flights into the United States, the things that's enticing illegal immigrants to come here. It's the free food, the free hotels, the free money. That's all going to come to a screeching halt if we have Donald Trump, Republican majority in the Senate and a Republican majority in the House. Yeah, I, I know that Lakin Riley's family uh, was outraged because uh, President Biden uh, got her name wrong and then apologized uh, for calling her murderer. Uh, illegal. Uh, he signed how many executive orders to overturn what Trump has done? And why is he so uh, focused on, on uh, you know, leaving this border open? Well, 94 executive orders to allow illegal immigrants easier access to the United States. He surrendered the border. And a lot of it has to do with the fact of the census. 
Remember, I believe that only U.S. citizens should be counted in the census, but Joe Biden and the Democrats want all the illegal immigrants counted in the census, Maria. And here's why. The census is used to calculate out congressional seats, how many seats each state gets, as well as the members of the Electoral College, how many Electoral College votes each state gets. So when you have these sanctuary cities and you have people moving to San Francisco and Chicago and New York City, they get counted for their number of congressional seats. These are blue states. These are liberal people. We forced a vote in the United States Senate to say only U.S. citizens should be counted in the census. Every Democrat senator voted to count every illegal immigrant. And in so many of these places, they don't have voter ID. That's what the Democrats want. So that's why AG Merrick Garland then is vowing to fight voter ID laws. I've never heard of anything like this. What's wrong with having an ID to vote? Well, the people of Wyoming understand that. We do in Wyoming. That's how our democracy is, is preserved. That's how we know we have free and fair elections. You need to make sure that it's that every person who is voting is the person that they say they are and is a citizen of the United States, and that's what Republicans are pushing. But look, I mean, we've been talking about the border for a long time, and the Senate has not been able to do anything, Senator. I mean, what's changed now? Why do you believe you're actually going to be able to make some change? Well, we're going to need to be in the majority to do that, and we need President Trump back in the White House, and we need a House as well. And we can defund so many of these. We need to basically slam the door on the things that are enticing more people to come to this country. Every time I meet with the Border Patrol, I've been there many times, they say they know what we need to do. We need to bring back the Remain in Mexico policy that worked. We need to eliminate this catch and release that Joe Biden has done. And we need to finish the wall. Those are the things that will secure our border for our country. Senator, you also uh, reminded me, you had grilled Javier Becerra about, uh, from HHS about hospitals. The hospitals are now overwhelmed. Why? Because migrants are getting sick and going to the hospital? Tell me what's happening. Well, you get 9 million illegal immigrants into this country, and the places that are complaining the most are the places that are the sanctuary cities. Uh, Denver, Chicago, New York, San Francisco. All of these folks are turning out to uh, ask for care, get care, and yet they're not paying any bills. And what we're hearing is that from these cities are saying, we need more federal money to pay for the care for the illegal immigrants. Mm -hmm. No, we need to stop the illegal immigrants from coming into the country in the first place. All the right. administration has no answers on any of this. And when you do all of this free care for those folks, that means the people that are paying their bills are ending up having to pay more to take care of those who are getting taken care of for free. All right, we will leave it there. Senator, real quick before you go, do you expect the TikTok bill to come to the Senate this week or no? Uh, I don't expect it this week. To me, TikTok is a threat to our national security because it's controlled by the Chinese Communist okay. Party. I met with the, the CEO of TikTok last week. I said, we don't need to get rid of TikTok. We got to eliminate, and they need to just sell to an American company so that TikTok is not under the influence of the Chinese Communi Communist Party. Look, okay. they use it to spy on us, to follow us. Um, and to promote propaganda. Thanks, Senator, Maria. Senator, thank you so much. Senator John Barrasso joining us this morning, exclusive in Wyoming. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.